Hello and welcome to the next module. So I'm building on the la the last few trainings and the last few modules in this course where I've discussed funnel calculations, budget decisions, and campaign strategies. And again, at this point, we should be at the stage where we have a tested and proven sales process, the challenge funnel that we've been building with you inside of the Propin Business Program. You should also have some audiences ready to test. You should have some images ready to test and you should have written and built out all of your ads, right? And we should understand from a high level how all of this fits together. In the next few modules, including this one, I'm going to be talking about specifically, you know, some more some more tactical things. How much are we actually going to spend on advertising and why? How are we going to ensure that the way we spend that is minimizing our risk and maximizing our chances of success and also the general strategy, like actually pressing the buttons in Facebook. What buttons do we press and how should we set things up? Before I get into that stuff though, and really what I wanna talk about today is the mindset that I think is required to make this stuff work. And I'm gonna assume that a lot of you who've been building up and going through the Propin Business Program with us and, and see this may think, nope, I don't wanna watch this. It's, you know, I wanna stay tactical. I don't wanna think about the theory and all that sort of stuff. But frankly, I think if you miss this, you're just as likely to fail as if you didn't have a funnel that converted or if you uh, didn't set up your ads properly. Right, because as I'm going to be sharing throughout this training, you can have everything right, but if you make decisions from the wrong mental framework, if you make decisions emotionally with this stuff, it's very, very easy to make no progress at all. So in the next few modules, what I'm going to be covering is basically decisions around money, right? decisions around spending money online, decision around, decisions that involve you looking at numbers and saying, I'm happy to spend this and potentially risk not it not working. Right. And a lot of us, when it comes to spending money, we, we become very emotional. We panic, we make rash decisions and we make decisions based around or influenced by the biases that we have around money. Right. I may say an amount of money that you may perceive to be a large sum. It may, you may think that, for example, a thousand pounds is a huge investment or not a huge investment, depending on your background and the experiences you've had in life up to this point. Okay. And as we move into this, you may end up spending and dealing with sums of money that you're spending on that on ad platforms that you've never could never dream of spending up to now okay and we see this with people when we're working with them where they will limit their ad spend even when something is working and generating huge returns for them they limit their ad spend to 10 15 pounds a day because spending more just seems extraordinary to them they could never imagine spending 50 100 150 200 pounds a day on ads Right, even though actually all they're doing is a, there's a mindset, there's an emotional belief there that's limiting their success. And vice versa, we see people who rush to spend more money because they assume that spending more money will equal success. Okay, so with this stuff, while this may all seem a bit odd, like we're talking about advertising and Johnny's going into mindset training, but if you fail to acknowledge this stuff at least, and if you fail to work on this stuff, it's almost a, a, a sentence for failure, frankly. So it's, it's crucial at this point that when we start talking about money, we start talking about numbers, we start talking about how much you're gonna be spending, right? That you leave emotion at the door and you view this as a business owner, you view this as objectively as you possibly can. Because those who get emotional with ads management or just any significant business's decision that involves money will ultimately make suboptimal decisions because we all have a bias to keep money, to reduce risk when it comes to spending, and we just want things to work straight away. We aren't willing to accept necessarily that something may not work the first, second, third iteration, but if we keep going and keep improving the process, it may have huge long-term upside. Okay, so again, by this point, you have a proven concept, hopefully speaking, right? Hopefully you've, you've, uh, you've run a funnel, you've run a, the challenge funnel through the Propin Business Program that we teach, and you've seen some conversions. So with that in mind, if you're at that point, you're in a fantastic position to be considering this stuff. And you're way ahead of where most people are at, which is where they will just target everybody and anybody on Facebook hoping that something may work, but there's no real strategy there. There's, not, there's no consideration about what might happen after someone clicks. Okay, so if you're at that point, you've basically managed every aspect of risk that is possible to influence, okay? If you're at that stage, you are a step ahead of the average advertiser, which means hopefully the mindset that you have already is like, I kind of think this stuff's working. I just need to know where to go next, all right? So here's a quick test for you, right, to see how you react. So it's Monday morning. You sit down to evaluate your ad spend and your marketing for the past week. And you, you as you're doing this, you get an email 
uh, from Facebook that says, you've just been billed 750 pounds for your Facebook ads. So they set up, tend to have automated triggers um, that bill you when you reach certain billing thresholds, right? So let's say you've reached that, that billing threshold and the money's left your account. Okay, and at the same time, sales have been a bit slow over the last week or 10 days. And perhaps the last time you run your funnel or the test you're currently doing, you actually didn't make any sales in that period of time, okay? What do you do? Do you, do you turn the ads off, yes or no? Okay, really sit and think about that and try and be honest with yourself. Like what, how would you respond to that? Because some people may look at that and perhaps it's correct. They might say, yep, I'm gonna turn them off. Some people may look at that and panic and say, I'm gonna turn them off. Some people may leave them running for the right or wrong reasons, okay? So what's the correct answer? Well, the correct answer is you don't make a, the decision straight away, okay? And that's sometimes quite difficult to do because if you don't have that much money in your bank account, you've just been billed 750 pounds and there's no promise of making money again from the money you spent, we tend to flip into panic mode, right? We tend to think, oh my, you know, look at our bank account and look at all our expenses and think, right, that's it, we're doomed, my business is gonna fail, okay? But for something to succeed, you have to be able to step back and objectively look at the data and decide, A, what is the choke point here? Like, why, why is this not working? And B, what is one thing that I can change to test a new hypothesis? Okay, so let's say that everything about your, your process was working, but there was one part of it where the percentages were slightly out of whack. Like perhaps your landing page hadn't been collecting emails correctly over the last couple of weeks. Maybe the percentage had dropped, maybe the headline needed work, or maybe it was a bit incongruent with the ads you were running. Okay, and then everything else fell out of kilter as a result. All right, if you just emotionally turn off the ads because you panic at the money that you spent, you may have actually prevented next week from being the most profitable week you've ever had in your business. Okay, now I'm not saying that turning them off is the wrong decision. I'm saying that turning them off for the wrong reasons or for emotional reasons is the wrong decision. Turning them off for the right reasons is a good decision. But the point is, is that if you make an emotional decision, if you react emotionally, it's very difficult to see the data. It's very difficult to see what's going on. So if you do turn them off, it suggests either that you've seen something in the data or you know something to be true and you think, actually, this, this approach needs a full re rework. Or you don't trust the funnel at all, in which case you probably shouldn't be running advertising. You weren't confident in your strategy. Again, you probably shouldn't be running advertising. Or you've mismanaged your expectations and approach, in which case you probably haven't gone through this process or managed your mindset. Okay, so someone with a great funnel, brilliant ads, an amazing offer can still fail because they can't manage their emotions surrounding money and risk, okay? If the, the thought of getting emails like that and spending money and not making it immediately makes you panic and worry, you are going to feel that way as you're running this and as you're setting this stuff up. And it's important that you're aware of that and manage your own biases and tendencies. So when it comes to this stuff, there are three, really three types of risk, three reasons why what we're doing won't work. Okay, the first one is economic and market risk. Second one is funnel and message risk. And the third one is tactical and implementation risk. So the first one, economic and market risk, as I'm recording this, we're in the throes of a, a pandemic where you know the markets have changed a bit. COVID-19, depending on when, when you're watching this, is affecting the industry, right? And some people will see their marketing doing better. Some people will see it doing worse. Obviously some businesses have had to completely close. But this is the idea that your funnel is brilliant and converts, your actions are correct, you're making the right decisions every day, but something happens at a macroeconomic level that affects your business performance. And frankly, that's outside of your control. We can't really do anything to stop that or limit the risk of that happening in terms of us running our business. We can just still adapt and manage our, our actions on a daily basis. Your funnel and your message risk is the, is the idea that your funnel wouldn't have converted even with the most disciplined daily actions and the right, done in the right way, taken objectively, and with the perfect market conditions. You should not be here, right? You should not be at this point. If you are worrying about that, if you're worrying that, well, I'm, I don't really know what I would advertise, then you shouldn't be at this point in this training. You should be back at the start of the Propin Business Program. The third one is tactical and implementation risk. This idea that your funnel converts and the market conditions are good, but you take imperfect actions and make emotional decisions. So the first one, you can't control. It doesn't really matter what you do. The second one is the Propane Business Program, the way we teach you to build a funnel and how we teach you to manage the risk through that process, this, the launch strategy we use and why we aren't using advertising from day one. And then now this one is your current focus. How do we set this up so that every day, every week, we are making decisions that maximize the chances of the business success, that maximize the chances of your advertising working? So this all comes down to reading feedback and understanding that things will always regress to the mean. OK, 
okay? So you may see this where you have a week or a day or a month in your business that's brilliant, and then a month, a week, or a day that are terrible. And when those two things happen, or either either sides of the, the peak and the trough, you, you feel brilliant or you feel terrible if you attach yourself emotionally to the performance of your business. And the decisions you would make in each of those two decisions, those two situations may be completely different. The way you feel speaking to a prospect or turning on an ad when things are going brilliantly is probably very different to the way you would feel if you're worried about being able to make ends meet that month, okay? That's a, that is a mindset issue, okay? We are taking efficient or inefficient action, not because of anything that is business related necessarily or because something isn't working or something stopped working. It's purely a mindset thing. So if we, if we zoom too much in on the data and we look at a bad day or a bad ad or a bad sales funnel performance test, then we may still make ineffective decisions. Okay, so while you're, the marketing function of your business and the sales funnel we teach you to build, when managed with ads is like a machine in the sense that we're serving thousands of impressions every day and clicks and actions are, are converting into potential customers, it's there's still the individual components are not machines, right? They're organic, they're human, they're, they're unpredictable, and they don't always do things as we want in percentage terms. So while we have at this point a sales process that we've seen to convert at at least three to 5%, that's not to say that for every 100 people we get in, we get five customers without fail, okay? And that would, that would scale and continue no matter how much we spend or when we do this. So while it operates like a machine at a large sort of high level view, the components are organic and unpredictable. So we may make zero sales from the first 100 leads and then 20 from the second. But if we turn our ads off without reading all the feedback, we may have prevented something that could have been immensely successful from ever getting to that point, either because we didn't leave it long enough or because we're zooming too much in, too much in, we're zooming too far in on the data. We're looking at the first 100 leads as a, for, for an example, or the first 10 leads and making emotional decisions too soon. So the worst thing you can do as we're setting everything up going forward is turn off a marketing campaign that would have worked perfectly given enough time or given enough data. And if you don't really sit and fully appreciate, you know, I need to look at things from a high level. If I'm making a decision after five clicks on my ad, if I'm making a decision after 20 clicks or 20 leads, and I'm turning something off or I'm scaling something because I've seen some immediate success or failure, you are probably looking at the data in, in too much of a, a granular way and it's unlikely to be the right decision. So this is these are just some principles that the success mindset that we recommend you adopt. And I think if you really start to think and believe this these processes and, or think this way, you are legitimately maximizing your chance of this working. Okay, no matter what tactics I teach you over the next few videos and the next few modules, if this stuff is, is way out of kilter, you'll probably still struggle. Okay, so I understand that while I've controlled everything possible, I still stand to lose money with online advertising. Okay, you might have the best funnel, the best message, but something in the tactics of the ads, like the audience or the, type, the, the, the platforms you're running it on, the placements you're using, the budgets you're using, something still might not quite be right the first few times you do it. And you might lose the money you spend in your initial tests. And if you aren't prepared to do that, that's almost like saying, I'm not prepared to pay the price of admission to access the potential success that these tools will allow me to, to get access to, okay? While something may not see, succeed immediately, it's crucial that I test a strategy properly so that I know for sure whether a strategy is working and I'm never tempted to repeat it, okay? So if you say, I have a 14-day challenge that I've built with, with Johnny and Yusuf in the Propane Business Program, I've seen some success with my organic promotion, I'm ready to scale it, and I'm gonna target people who are interested in men's health on Facebook between the ages of 21 and 30. And I'm gonna run the following ads, the following images, and I'm gonna promote this for a week and a half and see what works. If you panic after three days and turn your ads off, and then three months later decide to do the same test again, all you've done is wasted time and money, okay? When you run a test and when you're trying to test some variables, so whether that's the audiences, the images, the creative, the funnel, whatever, it's so important that you give it a fair test so that at very least, the very worst case scenario is you've spent some money, and you might not have acquired any customers immediately, but you've acquired data over, what, was that a good strategy or not? you've learned something. You may have learned that 
people who like men's health on Facebook are a terrible audience to target, right? But spending a small amount of money to get that data is invaluable. You can't get that anywhere else other than running the strategy in that way. But if you cut a test short or you panic or you make decisions or you make changes halfway through a test, you're just ensuring that you'll have to do it again, right? You're just ensuring that you're not getting the results you need. I set a budget to run for a test using the propane business calculations, what we're gonna be covering in the next few modules. And accept that while I may not make a sale straight away, I'm buying invaluable data. That's, a, that's the same point again, right? Even though if you, if you go through a process and you, you set a test budget and you're comfortable with that number, okay, and you're happy to spend that number, but then you change your mind tomorrow morning when a client cancels or something happens or a bill comes out that you weren't expecting, so you think, oh, I better turn those ads off. As long as you understand that when you're doing that, firstly, that's emotional. And secondly, you're, what you're doing there is ruining a test. You're actually wasting the money you've spent so far because you're not really going to have got enough data to say yes or no, this worked or this didn't. Okay. Finally, this process, this is a process that is iterative. Okay. If I approach it as a sequence of experiments and improve and adapt based on feedback, this time next year, I'll be untouchable. So rather than seeing it as I'm going to launch my first Facebook ad and that's immediately going to make me a six figure fit pro, right? View it as if I, if imagine over the next year, I run a sequence of tests and constantly improve, double down on things that work, stop doing things that don't work, adapt from feedback from customers, adapt from the ads feedback, adapt from the funnel feedback. And I'm constantly making this better and better every time I run it. Think where you'll be this time next year. And think how you'll compare to some of your competition who are still just trying to get customers by uploading an Instagram story every day, okay? So this is really the goal, the role that you serve as head of marketing in your business, which is essentially what you are, right? You are the coach, but you are also the head of marketing. If sales and leads and your funnel performance aren't in line with where they need to be, that's your responsibility and your fault, okay? So taking complete ownership of that and understanding that this is all that you do. Okay, so you run a defined test, that red circle on the left-hand side. You, you say, I'm gonna test these audiences, I'm gonna test these images, I'm gonna test this idea that when I spend this money on these things in this way, I think I'm gonna get some customers. Okay, that's what you believe. So you test it and you run that defined test into your challenge, into the 14-day challenge that we've helped you build and you've proven works. Okay, you know that when people joined that the last time you did it, it made some sales, it generated some customers. So you're testing that, that defined test with your challenge and the supporting systems. And as a result of that, you're gonna get some negative feedback and, you, and some positive feedback. It's very, very unlikely, in fact, impossible, that you're gonna get purely negative or purely positive, okay? Unless everybody in the challenge buys from you, which won't happen, and as everybody buys from you and just has nothing but positive things to say, okay, even then, to be honest, there'd be some negative feedback because you could have spent more money on the process. But the idea is there's negative and positive. There's always things that go well and things that don't go well. And we have to constantly then adapt from that and run more defined tests. And by defined, I mean, we're spending this amount of money to these people in this way, using the following creatives and the following images to try and achieve the following result. See how the challenge and the, and the systems that support the challenge cope with that. Look at the feedback and then incorporate that feedback into the next test. And that means in six months, 12 months, two years time, the stuff that you'll be doing and the scale you'll be at will be as a result of managing this process effectively. By contrast, if all you do is panic, if all you do is turn things off when they don't work, if all you're doing is starting and stopping and overhauling and trying a, a webinar or a messenger bot or sales calls or different funnels all the time, understand that when you do that, you're going back to square one. And if it's you versus a competitor and your competitor is improving the same process every single time in response to feedback, they'll beat you every single time, okay? So hopefully this module's helped, guys. I realize it's not directly linked to running ads on Facebook, but I think understanding the mindset required to succeed with this stuff is so, so important. So hopefully this has been helpful. Look forward to hearing your thoughts and I'll see you in the next training.